Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our Namaste Village session for Tuesday. I'm very excited to be here today, as I always am, of course, always excited to join with all of my mighty companions and to just open up this experience to share and to feel, to, to know, to really dive into. And that's what we're going to do today. But we're going to do it in a unique way, because in order for us to really enjoy this experience that we describe every day, it's also important for us to look at what blocks that experience, what we do or what we allow that stops us from having it. Now, for those of us who are here live, I began by playing a song which comes from a prayer called the Magnificat. And this is a prayer that is attributed to Mary, the mother of Jesus, when she says, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. And there's also a line in there where she says, God has lifted up the lowly, lifted up the lowly. And this is going to point us in the right direction for this session today. Because what we're going to be talking about here is humility, which is one of the most important ingredients to the awakening, to relax into the not knowing, so that we may realize that we are known by God, so that we can know and to experience that knowing within us that is the divine. In fact, I was having a conversation with Johannes about this yesterday, and I'm really excited to bring her into it as well as Vicky and Teddy. But basically, what, what this comes down to is if you want to completely stranglehold the experience that we describe here every day, which we really cannot totally describe because it is an experience, it's, it's something that we just know something that erupts within us, awakens within us. And so words and concepts can't really go with it. But when you're in it, you know you're in it. And the thing that strangleholds that experience is thinking you are right about anything. Yes. Thinking that you're right about this or that you know what needs to happen for COVID or you know what should happen to that person. You're right about this. This is the greatest stranglehold on the experience of awakening. And yet the experience of not knowing, of surrendering, as Mary does in that beautiful prayer, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For the Lord has looked with mercy on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. So this is what we're going to be looking at today, the importance of humility. And I want to begin by sharing a little something that I, I, I always hesitate to say that I wrote because it, it feels more like it's being written through me than by me. But I do want to share what I wrote yesterday after my conversation with Johannes. So let me read this very slowly and we'll use this as our jumping off point. If you want to understand, be content with not knowing. Be content with not knowing. This is the essence of my teaching. If you want to live in ignorance, claim to know. Only the ego claims to know anything. Your soul realizes that by being content with not knowing it is known by God. Let me read that last line again. It's so important. Your soul realizes that by being content, not knowing it is known by God. Only then is the truth within you known by God. The divine cannot enter into a consciousness that thinks it knows because it is blocked by arrogance. Your soul understands that the path to true knowledge comes through humility, not arrogance. So be humble and relax the mind. 
when it lets go of its tight grip on unreality, you will have a direct experience, a direct experience of what is known by God. This is the only thing. This knowledge is the only thing that you need. The not knowing. Now, this is actually the hardest thing, literally the most difficult thing for one who is taking up residence in the split mind to do, to relax into not knowing. Because to that part of us, that aspect of us, not knowing is weakness. Not knowing is is not preferred <laughs> knowing being confident believing that you have the answer but as we just heard this is the the framework and the practice of the ego to always assert itself to demand that it is right but what also must be true if you claim to be right there is another who must be wrong and this is where it starts to to go astray if I'm right, then I must make you wrong. I was thinking earlier today of an experience that I had not long ago when I was, I was, I was with some friends and, and they are people who are really, really caught up in all of the so-called evidence regarding the vaccine. Now, the truth is, I don't know what's right or what's wrong with the vaccine. I have chosen to be vaccinated because that was the guidance that I received. And when I, I mentioned this, there was a lot of eye rolling and noises like like this. Maybe you've heard this noise before. <sighs> <laughs> and I think, oh, I can't believe you're so stupid. Haven't you read this? Haven't you heard that? Haven't you done this? And of course, the only thing I could do that would have any real value as they were throwing all of this stuff at me was to say, as we have learned many, many times here, I don't know, maybe. Maybe. I love you. <laughs> Once again, there is no better three, a set of three different ideas or words that can end an argument and end a disagreement and bring you back to grace and holiness more than that. Because the argument stops. This is humility. And this is why we stress this so much. The first step to the awakening is to be humble enough to realize that you do not know and that it, it cannot be known. But by stepping into humility, the truth within me is known by God because I have removed the blocks to that knowing. I have removed the barriers that keep me from being completely experienced and known by the divine. And now here I am, surrendered as Mary was in that beautiful prayer. So this is our jumping off point. And I'm gonna turn it over to Johannes now because I wanna get as many perspectives on this subject as we possibly can, because it's so important. I want you to really hear it. And sometimes maybe you'll hear it from me, maybe you'll hear it from Vicky on another day or Teddy or Johannes or anyone else that's speaking, but hear this message because this is the key. So Johannes, I'm going to turn it over to you for a few minutes, and I, I would just love to hear your perspective, because this really came from a conversation that you and I were having yesterday. Right. Yes, thanks, James. Well, what triggered our conversation was mm -hmm. that, actually, Jack and I were reading something beautiful from one of the books of Goldsmith. He was explaining about this oneness with God, the realization of God's presence. And I told my husband, I said, Oh God, I am aspiring to live in that consciousness. I recognize that I don't, I'm not there yet, but I'm doing my best prayers, forgiveness, all this. Uh, beautiful things that we have at hand to be able to live in that consciousness of oneness. So I, I called you, James, and I say, James, but you know, we are aspiring to be in that consciousness. The Course in Miracles says, you are not a body. I'm not a body. Okay, but I, be I still believe that I live in this body. 
I mean, I'm not a body, okay. I'm not going to take a shower for one week to see what happened. You see, because I'm not a body. I'm sorry. That I'm, so, I'm not a body. Or this world is an, il an illusion. Jesus Christ. Yes, this world <laughs> is an illusion. Uh -huh. Just step in front of a bus or something like that to see if this is... So we are aspiring to express that. I share from my own experience. Since I'm, um, I am a child, I felt that presence. I felt there was something beyond this world. And that was the the driven force or driving right. driving force for me it was like an invitation to know more but i'm not there yet yes i i believe i am a body and i take a shower every day and i eat every day and i brush my teeth every day this world is an illusion Yes, I know this world is an illusion, but still, I do the things that are required for this world. I was talking to, to Jack this morning. When I went to engineering school, okay, this is a program of five years. Sometimes some people take six years, seven years, because it's, I mean, it's, it's really hard. But the first semester my classmates and i were so proud and so arrogant into this oh we are in ministerial school engineering school, engineering school and we carry our all our instruments our tea like showing the whole world that we are studying to to be engineers we were in the first semester. We, we were starting to learn the concepts, the mathematical formulas. Then we had to go through application. Then we have to, so it was, it took, I did it in like four and a half years. Some people did it in seven years. So to be in the engineering school doesn't mean I am an engineer already. I am on my way to become an engineer. And I, I feel that this is the same thing with the spiritual path. We have chosen spiritual path. We are learning to... to we are learning to, again, it's like on learning, like the Course in Miracles, all the concepts that we have learned in this human experience. And we are remembering, awakening. We are uh, learning to be who we are, to who we truly, really are in the mind of God, but I know that I am not there. And on my personal, personal life, I pray every day. I do process, process of forgiveness or writing uh, the applications of the spiritual uh, things I learn, all those things help me it helped me they help me to remember because that's the goal yes our oneness with god the remembering of who we are but there are some steps that we must take to remember who we are because we have forgotten that's why we have tools like a course in miracles lessons we are applying, remembering, learning. There, there is a, a moment where at uh, the Course in Miracles that Jesus says that it's not easier to heal a terminal disease than a headache. But we don't believe it. 
I mean, if I have a headache, also it says, but that a pill will not help you to, to, to take away a headache. But if you think you need that pill, take it. And sometimes I have a headache and I put oil, you know, essential oils to help me to get rid of my headache. Or if I need to take a Tylenol or whatever, I do it because I am still in my mind, in this world, in this physical world, um, I, I am not going to claim that I believe that to heal a cancer is as easy as to heal a headache. I'm not there yet. I'm not. I mean, it's, it's as easy as, it, as I'm saying where I am, my consciousness, I don't like to tell people, you don't need to do this. You just need to realize God's presence. Or you just need to be the... Well, I don't, because I don't know what anybody needs to, to remember the truth of their being. I, the only thing I can do is to share my experience, and I do self-reflection, I do apply in, in some way. At night, many times, I ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, show me, show me. Is there anything I need to release? Is there anything I need to, to what? Did I do something today that wasn't loving or, because, those things help me not to flagell flagellate myself. It's not to punish myself. It's that because I am committed to, to the awakening. I am committed to remember my oneness with God. And I will do whatever it takes in a loving way. I read books uh, about you know, like Goldsmith, A Course in Miracles. I'm doing the lessons again. What else can I say? I mean, where I am in my, in my path toward God. And some people ask me, well, as a minister, I am here to be truly helpful. That's the profession I choose. After being an engineer, I didn't like it. And then I was a math teacher. I love it, but I, I wanted something even more spiritual. I chose to be a minister just because I wanted to share with as much people as possible what I do. But I'm not there yet. I'm, <laughs> I do whatever is necessary to, to do this spiritual work and also to take care of myself in this uh, realm. Yeah. So that's what I have to share. Oh, Johannes, thank you so much for framing it in just that way. You are such a great example, as is Vicky and Teddy. Hopefully we are all good examples of this surrender, of this willingness. That was the, one of the words that came to me when you were speaking, I'm willing to see this. I'm willing to allow. In fact, one of the things that I was also thinking is that it's only the ego that asserts, I know this, listen to me. But the soul relaxes and allows. Mm. And our willingness to, to access that experience, that's all it takes. In the Course, Jesus says, all you need is a little willingness. You don't need to be fully willing. I'll do the rest. I'll take this for you. But you need to be at least a little willing. And the first step in that willingness is to say, I don't have in my mind, in my ego, I don't have the answer. And I'm literally, my identity is literally the block to the answer. So once again, humility to keep coming back to realizing that it's only by relaxing, allowing, being willing that I can get out of the way 
so that I can see that I am the answer, not my identity. My identity is nothing. But as, as you were saying, Johannes, it's really that journey from here to here. We, we say we know these things, but do we really? I, I know that I am not a body. Well, I am through the application of this on a, on a consistent basis that experience is, is beginning to broaden and open within me. But to say, I know this now, and now I'm here to teach it is the sure sign that you're not really a teacher at all. A teacher is one who has learned the lesson and is sharing that, as is our dear friend Vicky, who I'm going to turn to now, because there's no one more willing that I know than Victoria. So, Vicky, I'm going to let you take it and, and go from there. Good morning, James. Good morning, Johannes. And thank you both. Johannes, thank you for that great example, because we all identify with that. And the key is where Jimmy started. We don't know. We don't know where we are. The gift in it is that I'm finding is I don't care where I am. I'm just hanging out with God all the time. The best I know how. And that's got to be enough. He says it's enough. The word that Joel uses is that we live here by unfoldment. When we don't know anyone, when we really get, and maybe that's just the first year in engineering school, in, in Christ school, that I have no idea how this stuff works, but I know that I don't know. And I can find out by watching what unfolds around me, through me, and wherever I look to be the way that's given me. So it's how to navigate here through our bodies, through illnesses, through traumas, through um, whatever it is that seems to pop up, vaccinations. How do we navigate without using the ego system of judgment and figuring it out and problem solving and protection and all the rest of it? It's by, it's, and I think his word works for me perfectly. Oh, I'll watch the unfoldment of grace of and it may come through as inspiration it will come through as a knowing but it's an unfoldment of where to go what to do what to say next it flows the Tao, the holy spirit we let the force of that presence our own christ presence the holy spirit's presence we let let that's the biggest word for me I let the Holy Spirit lead me. And I celebrate that I don't know. It's not a burden. It's the lifting of the burden. I definitely don't know. And it's a real reason to rejoice and be glad because then I'm not, I'm not responsible anymore for what seems to be my mistakes that I judged. I'm only responsible to keep turning within and keep that connection open. Just like you said, Johannes, every day, oh, dear God, please help me. What did I mess up today? Where was I in the way today? And stay connected inside to that spirit, that inspiration, that, that um, center. And then let it tell us, let it show us every day, all day, where to go. I was on my way to Walmart this morning, and I pull in, and the guy says, oh, no, Walmart's closed today because of some electrical problem. Oh, I said, okay, oh no, that's, what am I gonna do? I needed to do this and that. Oh, I must not, I said, must not need to do this and that. And then before I knew it, this thought popped into my head, go to job lot. I never go to job lot, it's down the street. I don't know why I don't go, it's just, I didn't think of it. Job lot has everything a lot easier, cheaper, and in a smaller store where I can get to it quicker. <laughs> and I laughed at the Holy Spirit. I said, wow, that's really fun. Thank you. Thank you for making it easy. I didn't have to go 5,000 feet to get a roll of tinfoil. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but that's what it is with everything. You know, and this, I live, Teddy and I do, especially now, because literally we're facing a, what might seem to be a huge health crisis. But it, nothing is a crisis in the Holy Spirit's hands. Nothing. Only our willingness to bring ourselves as we are open that's all humility is i don't know 
That's what humility is, just as you said, Jimmy. I don't know how to do any of this stuff, but thank you, God, that you do. How? How do you want to use me? How can I be truly helpful? Show me where to forgive. What's in the way? Where am I holding some something against myself or my brother and I don't even know it yet? And whether it's a hangnail or a headache to cancer, the answer is by the grace of the Holy Spirit and my willingness to know I don't know and relax because unfoldment has a tough time getting through tension. So why be tense about it? That's why I'll relax, be playful, and enjoy that we have a heavenly presence, a force, whatever name we give it, that cares for us, provides for us, directs us through everything. If you make your bed in hell, so what? I'll go there with you. It doesn't matter. The spirit of the Lord is upon us at any instant, not just when we've prayed and done novenas and and read a thousand books. At any instant, we go from from sinner to saint by just the turning within and saying, drop it all, dear God, help me. I don't know anymore. I really know I don't know. Show me your way. That's it. Mm. I will be done. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Yeah, you know, uh, you reminded me of something we, we talked about quite a long time ago, which is to follow the Holy Spirit's tickle. Yes. <laughs> when you feel the guidance from the Holy Spirit, it's like this inner tickle. In, in, it's like an, an effervescence that rises within you. That's how you know it, it inspires joy. It inspires lightness. I also like how you said that inspiration recoils from tension. It has a hard time moving through tension. So just relax. Enjoy. The, the idea of I need to be right about this is what tension is. That's, that is the very thing that is blocking the experience. I'm right about this and you're wrong. I've done the research. I'm not falling into these conspiracy theories. I know. Well, guess what? You just blocked it. But if you can just relax and say, on my own, I can do nothing. On my own, I know nothing. But as I surrender into this spirit and as I follow this Holy Spirit tickle, everything is known through and as me. I don't know how that happens. I haven't the slightest idea, but I know that it does through my joy, through my humility, through my willingness to just allow. So, Teddy, I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. Well, I was listening to Johannes. And the phrase that kept on coming to me was be in the world, but not of the world. Um, and, you know, we're all here and we can't deny that. The only, but to deny it takes a total denial that the world doesn't exist. And that's an experience. And many have had that experience and are still in the world, but they know they're not of the world. Um, and that changes things around a little bit. You know, we're talking about the idea of soul. When you know yourself as a soul, um, you know everybody is that soul as well. And I think that's why the Course talks so much about remembering for your brother. You know, be in the world, but not of the world. Recognize yourself as a soul and remember for your brothers when they forget. Join with your brothers and remember that they're not who they think they are and that they're whole and perfect as they were created. And they're a soul in the kingdom as well as you are. So, you know, at a certain point in time, we got to keep this simple because like you say, the ego wants to overthink everything. It wants to overthink absolutely everything and come up with answers without an experience and that, that's one of the things the Course says, none of our thoughts are true. Even the ones that may be right-minded are not true. <laughs> they, they point you in the right direction, but they're just not true. So, you know, and, and that's, that takes a moment and that's where the humility comes in. You know, none of my thoughts are true. So I could be saying the perfectly right thing I could even be right about what I'm saying, 
but the thoughts that I'm using aren't the truth of who we are because we're all one and we can remember that oneness for our brothers. Remember that we're not, and we're in the world, but not of the world and just live in a state of mind. And that's where openness comes into. Openness isn't the willingness to entertain lots of ideas. Openness is the idea that your mind is open and you can experience the grace of God and understand the Holy Spirit that way. But it's not about being open to more ideas. None of our ideas are true. Oh man, you, you just hit on I think, the, the key right there. None of my ideas are true. So why cling to any of them? In other words, in in reality, I'm wrong no matter what I think, but not a wrong in the sense that there's uh, some guilt attached to it, a wrong in, in admitting that, that there is freedom. And so to realize that even my highest and my brightest ideas are still concepts. And this is a step right. beyond the conceptual. This is a step beyond all ideas and all concepts. And this is really where, this is the birthplace of humility. When I realize that any concept in my mind is ultimately not true. So relax, let truth take over. And there are no words, there are no concepts to that truth. There is only the living of it, the vibration of that truth, not the assertion. Remember, only the ego asserts. So if I'm finding myself asserting in any way, then I'm really wrong. I mean, I'm wrong no matter what, but then I'm really wrong. <laughs> Just relax, enjoy, share, love one another. That's the only thing we need to do. And then the experience comes on its own. Well, you know, that's what Jesus told me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Teddy. That's what Jesus told me at one point in time. After I had a major experience, he said, just tell, tell your brothers to love one another and they'll learn of the love of God. That's all we need to know. Just love each other. That's it. Period. Talk about yeah. simple. Just yeah. love one another. Johanna, do you want to say something else? Yeah, I wanted to read something from the Infinite Way letter from Goldsmith because it, it says, we may seek the consciousness of truth. We may ask for a realization of God as individual being. We may desire, and then it says, even struggle to attain that mind which was also in Christ Jesus. But we may not ask or seek or knock for a thing or a condition in the external realm, whether it be a person, a healing, an enrichment, employment, or a home. Our work is not that of trying to save or heal or redeem the world, but the revelation of God as individual being, which shows forth the known reality. So it's the revelation of God that shows forth the known reality of that which is appearing as negative condition. So as Jesus says, seek, desire, I mean, seek a new... Eh, toca la puerta y serás contestado. Sometimes I think things in Spanish. It's a knock and the door will be open to you. He was talking about seek and you will find. Seek it first. The kingdom of heaven and everything else will come. So it is okay to seek, to desire, to, to ask for a realization of God. So is that that is okay? Even struggle to attain that mind which was also in Christ Jesus. That 
is our goal. That for me, that's that's my goal. That's the only thing that is that is to be really truly helpful in this world. To seek only the mind of Christ, the mind of love, through humility. Hmm. In fact, why don't we, as we begin to close here, why don't we listen to this very short passage one more time? Now, now that we've been swimming in this ocean for a little while. Let's listen to it one more time and see if it takes us even deeper. One moment. Okay, here we go. Drink this in. If you want to understand, be content with not knowing. This is the essence of my teaching. If you want to live in ignorance, claim to know. Only the ego claims to know anything. Your soul realizes that by being content with not knowing, it is known by God. The divine cannot enter into a consciousness that thinks it knows because it is blocked by arrogance. Your soul understands that the path to true knowledge comes through humility, not arrogance. So be humble and relax the mind. When it lets go of its tight grip on unreality, you will have a direct experience of what is known by God. This knowledge is the only thing that you need. So today, just relax, be humble, don't think that you know anything, and if suddenly you find your mind or your ego asserting anything, just fall back into the arms of grace, as Mary did in that beautiful prayer. Just fall back into the arms of grace and know that you're perfectly taken care of, perfectly provided for. It's really so simple. When you think about it, you don't need to know or assert anything. All you need to do is relax and be shown. And there it is. Thank you, everyone. We're going to go ahead and we'll do our final closing prayer as we have been every day, the prayer of protection. If you want there at Namaste, you can go ahead and stand or stand wherever you are. But in some way, make, make this declaration real. These aren't just words where at the end it says, wherever we are, God is. Really feel that. So here we go. The light of God around us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God texts us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Amen. Thank you, James. Thanks. Love you. Have an amazing day, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Namaste. Thank you, my dear companions. Happy I Tuesday. Love I love you all. Enjoy the Tuesday market, everybody. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye for now.